assassination of Salman Tarsi. We have suddenly seen that blasphemy has become Pakistan's, should I say, number one issue, at least for a big se section of the population. We have seen that the religious parties, by just uh, doing that, can bring 50,000 people onto the streets. We've seen that the murderer of Salman Tasir is a hero for the majority of people. We've seen the lawyers shower rose petals upon him. We've seen that those who say that he should be brought to justice are now afraid to speak up. And now I hear there's even a film which is going to be made on Mantas Padri called A Gaur Hazi. <laughs> so something's happened. That issue, which used to be, well, not an issue at all, has suddenly been brought before public attention and grips us. It is now so important that people have stopped wrapping fish or other things in, in newspapers because they say there might be a Quranic verse over there or Yoski Dev or Mati Yogi. People are really, really scared. I have some statistics here. From 1927 to 1984, there were only nine registered cases of blasphemy in the entire South Asian region. 1927 was when the penalty for blasphemy was two years in jail. And uh, 1984, 1982 was when this was changed to life imprisonment. Or death, death or life imprisonment. In 1990, the penalty was increased by Nawaz Sharif to death alone. So, re, I, I want to tell you again: 1927 to 1984, only nine cases, and in the last one year, there have been 37. Something's gone wrong. What is it? Is there a blasphemy gene within us? No. There is the blasphemy meme and the meme has caught on. Now, an overwhelming majority supports the death penalty for blasphemy. The overwhelming majority says, catch the person who is even alleged to have said something against the Prophet. It cannot ever be repeated because the repeating is Repeating it is again blasphemy. And so we descended to this level where reason has completely disappeared. So what's happened? It's not that our genes were different, are different now from what they were before. We are the same genotypes, but we have different phenotypes. Something's gone wrong in the mind. Something in our minds has become so much accepting of blind faith, of unquestioning dogma, that if the mere idea is placed upon you, you <coughs> it will propagate like a like a plague, like a forest fire. So, we need to understand from the point of view of evolutionary biology why this has happened. And at least to my mind, there are explanations. And that is the way in which our young have been brought up. <coughs> what they are taught in schools, what they see on television, the, and above and beyond all else, the relentless propaganda that they are subjected to in the masjids, in the mosques, every Friday. 
All you have to go and all you have to do is to go and listen to them. I don't know how bad it is in Karachi because I don't live over here. But a few of us thought that it was really important to have empirical data on this, actual facts, so that we know what's being told to people across the country. And so in a hundred mosques of rural Punjab, we sent these young men who had little tape recorders on them and they recorded what the Maulvi was saying during the Juma prayers. It's all on the website of mashalbooks.com. Mashalbooks, one word, dot com. It also has the Urdu transcription and it also has the English translation in, in case you want to see that. And then, hearing this, you can understand why ours has become a society that is so misogynist, that is so violent to the extreme that they want to take each other's lives on issues like should you pray like this or should you pray like this? If you want to understand why we've abandoned reason, go listen to the Buddha in the Masjid. But let's return to academics and ask what is the defense against against uh, memes? You know that not all memes are bad. After we also function on memes. In fact, the way that Dawkins introduced the concept of memes, he says, look, if I have if a scientist has a good scientific idea, well, then he whispers to his uh, colleague that, hey, I discovered this, maybe this is the way things should be, and then that colleague will whisper to two others, maybe they write up a paper in a scientific journal. Well, then that becomes a meme. That becomes a part of our thinking process. But then, this is a meme that has been subjected to reason that has been subjected to empirical tests. But once you take reason out of this, then every kind of viral, every kind of viral meme will propagate. So therefore the antidote to memes, damaging memes, is first of all scientific thinking, critical thought. Because any meme that has to pass through that filter will have its will we will not be able to propagate it, or it may even be deleted. Well, another way could be, of course, uh, simply by being closed-minded. I mean, if you don't don't uh, log on to the internet, there is no way that you can pick up a virus from the internet. And that's a protection. But on the other hand, then you lose out so much. But then there are other ways too, and one of them is uh, simply to meditate. Just think about things. Meditation, introspection, is how you then start analyzing the thoughts within your own mind. Did you, is what you heard actually something that is sustainable? something that is right, how can I fit this into my larger understanding of the world? And this kind of introspection is a barrier against being pollution, against being infected by means. And I guess the last thing would be that, uh, well, have a sense of humor. <laughs> So I let over here and as I said, these are thoughts that have come to my mind. And maybe there are better explanations for understanding what has happened to our society. In particular, the, the kind of neurosis that we are seeing in relation to blasphemy. I'm, I'm, I think we must try and understand them from as many different perspectives as possible. The, 
biological, the, the evolutionary uh, perspective that I've tried to put before you is not the only one. There are other ways that you could look, look at it. For example, you could say that, and you could make a very good case, that the reason the blasphemy issue was pushed to the very front by the religious parties was because they wanted to increase their power over people. Now, that's not in contradiction with the concept of means because they already have a situation, they already have a population where the bulk of people have ceased to reason on religious matters, on larger matters. And so their minds have become susceptible to this kind of suggestion. And then from one to the other to the other, that's the meme explosion. So now let's talk about it. 